Hello. Hello, Robert. Yes. Hi, this is Roman from Wirtschaftsfacts.de. Um, yes, good how are you today? Very fine, thank you. Very fine. Um, it's very good to have you on the phone, and we really appreciate that you take the time to make this interview with Wirtschaftsfacts.de and Infokriegernews.de. And um, I hope you to feel fine today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very well. We're going to go, uh, what, about 20 minutes or so? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I mean, of course, we have a couple of questions yeah, uh, regarding, of course, deflation vs. inflation, situation uh, in Europe, the debt crisis, and, of course, uh, American housing markets. But, therefore, I would suggest just to start. Is that okay? That's fine. Let's do it. Very fine. So our first question is, where do we stand in the current attempt by governments around the world of reflating the system? We, we stand in a very similar position to where we stood during the collapse of October 1929 when the big New York banks got together and decided they would pool their resources to stop the decline. It appeared to work for a few days back then, but failed very quickly. Now we're in a much larger cycle, so these same things are happening, but on a much larger scale, lasting months at a time. Ultimately, the sovereign governments will fail in their attempts to keep the system inflated as well, and for the same reasons. Okay, in February 2009, you told the market participants to close their short positions by predicting that the Dow would rebound and head for 10,000 points in the month to come. Where are we now in this cycle? So the market seemed to head for 11,500 points in the Dow, or should people be very careful now or, and prepared for the next bear market leg down? Yes, at the time, uh, shortly after the liftoff a year ago, um, I published a list of, or a range of upside potential for the Dow. We thought 10,000 was an ideal target. Uh, we actually had a zone between 9,400 and 11,600, which is a very wide range. But bear market rallies um, don't stop at any particular spot. They do tend to peak somewhere between 3 eighths and 5 eighths. Uh, in terms of a retracement of the previous decline. So that's the range we were looking for. We are now closer, as you point out, we are closer to the upper end of that range. This does not make the market more bullish. It makes it far more vulnerable because before this bear market is over, it's going to go a long way down, and this is just giving uh, more room on the downside, getting the rally more uh, extremely overbought. We were losing upside momentum. Somewhere between now and maybe a few more weeks from now, we're going to see the final high in this rally. And the rest of the year, and probably for five years, looking out five years at least, I think we'll be in the second half and the much more uh, destructive half of the bear market. Okay. So you are taking the side of deflation and the current discussion between deflation versus inflation. The huge financial rescue packages and emergency programs created by the government initiated the wave of reflation and we were observing over the last year. But uh, nearly all of those programs are on the way of running out, is it? Whether it is the huge MBS program by the Fed, the TALF program, the tax credit designed to lure first buyers into the housing market or the impact of the huge stimulus program signed by Obama. So what does it mean to you? First of all, I don't believe that many of these stimulus programs had anything to do with the rebound. All of them were instituted in the higher levels of the stock market in early 2008 uh, and going into the middle of 2008. So they created stimulus programs. They offered unlimited credit throughout the world and the five major central banks, and the market crashed anyway. Uh, it finally reached a bottom when it would normally reach a bottom, when we had five waves down and the vast majority of people were extremely bearish. That's just the way the market normally works. We've had a normal rebound, and people uh, are forgetting the dates that these easing programs were put in place they were not put in place at the bottom. 
they were put in place less than halfway down in terms of the points decline. So people can give government and central banks credit if they want, but all they've done is what they always do, which is offer credit to the marketplace. The marketplace can choose to take it or not. Once we reach the extreme point of pessimism on the 9th of March last year, people began um, getting more willing to extend credit and to go into debt, and that has helped our reflationary period. A lot of this was because of the confidence that people were allowed to feel because the government was behind a lot of the guarantees. But nevertheless, the timing is up to the market, and once it starts down again, none of the promises that they make will matter. The market will go down regardless of any actions that the Fed or the governments take. Okay. Other observers, such as Jim Rogers or Mark Faber, take the other side in the game. They say that the Fed is going to print hygienic amounts of money when the stock markets start falling again, and Faber has recently said that the March lows of 2009 would never be seen again. I think you don't agree, is it? Not even close. Uh, the, the Fed does not exist to print money. It exists to monetize federal debt. Uh, only to the point that it can keep the Federal Reserve Bank healthy. They've already overstepped their bounds by monetizing a, a trillion dollars worth of mortgages. But they didn't take the bad debt mortgages. They only took the mortgages that the government guaranteed, which are the Fetty, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgages. So they're essentially the same as Treasury bonds. And those are, that's the only kind of debt that the Fed is interested in monetizing. But the world is drowning in bad privately issued debt from, well, privately and by smaller governments, such as states, cities, and municipalities. There's $55 trillion worth of IOUs out there. Some of them are from the U.S. government, but most of them are from other entities, and there's no way that the Fed is going to monetize all of that junk. And if you're reading the articles recently in the Wall Street Journal, one of the most uh, strongest buying areas for the past year among the public has been what are called junk bonds. These are high-yield bonds issued by all kinds of people. They will not be paid off. There's no way that a corporation can pay off a bond at 6 7 or 8% over the next few years as we head further into depression. All of those bonds are going to default. There's no way that the central bank is going to be able to keep up with the rate of, of defaults that I think we're going to see. Yeah, that was my next question, because we are currently living in a sea of debt, as you said it. Uh, what the governments did so far was to give the people who should have better gone bankrupt a bailout that has never been seen in history so far. How long can governments go on backstopping nearly everything and everybody to try preventing them from going bankrupt? There are limits. Already, the governors of the Fed are arguing amongst themselves. Some of them are very unhappy with the Uh, new uh, assets, quote-unquote assets, that they've taken on, nor, namely the mortgages. So there's dissension within the Fed itself, and the Fed doesn't want to act unless the U.S. government uh, backs uh, the guarantees. But even that has limits, because when the public gets angry about the spending, they're, they're going to throw their representatives out of office, and they're going to elect other types of people. My whole argument, which I wrote in the book, Conquer the Crash, is that what is changing is a social mood, the attitude of people, and that is ultimately in control. And if the people have had enough and they, they don't want this spending anymore, that's what we're going to get, a cessation in that kind of uh, irresponsible spending and propping up of failing businesses. I don't think that this is going to last much longer, maybe a few more months. But certainly by the end of 2010, I think the electorate and the Fed are going to be much more conservative than they are now. And already you can see it in a lot of the reactions among the public. These gatherings called tea parties, uh, we have a leading Democrat and a leading Republican both angry at the Fed and want to um, you know, take a look at the books. The Fed is trying to stop them through the courts, but they'll eventually fail. All of these are movements that are going to curtail the ability of both the federal government and the Fed to inflate. And the, the interesting thing as well, I'd like to add something else. Even if when the Fed monetizes uh, other debt or when the government guarantees debt, it's not creating inflation. It's merely holding up 
the debt that's already there. So there's been no net inflation created in recent uh, months. And in fact, if you're following the banking statistics, you can see that the bank lending has actually uh, gone into negative territory. So deflation is, win is winning slowly. It won't be completely in charge until the stock market rolls over, though. And that, as we said, could be happening today or it could happen in a, in a couple of months. But once that stock market starts down, just as it did in October of 2007, the game will be over.